Thank you so much. The person who's going to honor us with some concluding remarks is someone who has an extensive career as a, a lawyer, advocate, arbitrator, uh, institution builder. He's been associated with BCDR, DIAC, LCIA, AAA, you name it, ICSID, a law faculty member, commentator, author, and more. I give you Mr. Jan Polson. Thank you, James. Uh, we're 45 minutes over, so anybody who really wants to go to lunch will not offend me in any way. Um, what a pleasure it is for me to stand before you as the president of a court of arbitration which has done nothing wrong yet. I hope the next time I see you, I can still make a statement of, uh, with that degree of confidence. Uh, for two reasons, I will not keep you long, because I like you very much. I want you to be my friends and I appreciate that you're staying here over time. And the second reason is I have a plane to catch. Making the case for ADR and the GCC, I don't have to say anything about it. We have heard about it and discussed it so far today. Uh, but I'm interested in this, making the case. Uh, yes, there are so many reasons why it's needed, but how do we get to this? Success. Dr. Mira gave us a hint right at the very beginning we're thinking about. Did you notice he used the word ecosystem more than once in his slides? Um, he may not know this. His name in Swedish, which is my native language, Mira, means more, more than ecosystem, ecosystems. I want to leave one idea in your minds to think about. And I don't have time to tell you what I think about it. Just leave it in your mind to think about what it means that what is important for the international arbitral process to be successful is the idea of ecosystems in the plural. And if you think you can guess what I'm, th what I'm thinking about, you're probably not right, uh, I would, I would uh, venture. Um, the idea of succeeding in the area of providing international arbitral services has commended itself to um, people and organizations for quite some time. I remember the 1990s when it became obvious that the New York Convention was working and, and, and this could be a, a very interesting industry. Um, in one country, there was an attempt to set up, I will not mention what it was, uh, to set up an arbitration institution that was going to conquer the field of arbitration in a particular region of the world. And they got the government to fund it. They bought a building. They furnished the building. They put in all of the infrastructure. They convinced a practicing senior lawyer to leave practice and to become the director of this arbitration institute. And they're open for business. And the first day, no case came in. In the first week, no case came in. The first month, no case came in. Uh, the first year, no case came in. These takes time. You know, people have to write contracts and people have to know about this. And um, time goes on, new members of parliament, new ministers, people saying, what did we get for our money? And um, it vanished. Creating the ecosystem uh, is something which is of key importance. But when I speak of ecosystems, I don't mean that what we need is all sorts of arbitral institutions all over the world. I'm just leaving this thought in your minds. Um, each arbitration might need to be an ecosystem. And that is the real key to success. And we don't think about it often enough. Uh, certain countries that have um, produced Many senior people who have been active as international arbitrators find themselves criticized because their arbitrators are guilty because they're retired judges of something which the English call judgeitis. It's sort of an unfair criticism because English is a leading language of international arbitration. There are a lot of uh, uh, sensationally good English judges and it's natural that they become um, uh, arbitrators and if something happens frequently, it's likely statistically that um, there will be discontent with a certain percentage of these people. Um, I've never heard anybody criticize Icelandic arbitrators. 
but I've never met an Icelandic arbitrator, so it's not quite fair, but you hear about this. What does it mean? Uh, it means if individuals, if individual arbitrators come to the arbitral process with an idea, in a de fix, about how that arbitration is going to run because all legal processes run the same way, the way a judge who's been doing the same thing for 30 years might think, that's not going to be a tailor-made ecosystem for that case. And it's likely to be quite unsuccessful. Uh, and let me give you just one illustration, um, which I think will bring this home. Uh, imagine that you have a simple case. Uh, everything is done according to the rules. You have two parties uh, from, um, let's say, uh, Italy and Sweden in an international arbitration. Their contract is English. It will be heard in English. And for some reason, uh, the arbitral tribunal is comprised of two Greeks and uh, pick another nationality. The language of the arbitration is in English, uh, but the two Greek-speaking, native English-speaking arbitrators uh, find it easier to speak in Greek, in Greece, whenever there is a quiet moment. And before you know it, it seems that there is an arbitral tribunal with two people who are cooperating very closely and talking and, 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 and going off together and so forth. And the one who doesn't speak Greek doesn't understand what's going on and they're not paying attention to this. Now, the two, the presiding arbitrator might be doing things the way he or she has been doing for years and years and years in uh, their home jurisdiction. Uh, but you will have one unhappy arbitrator. Maybe that's not so important. You'll have one very unhappy party, which is the party that appointed the arbitrator who is being left out of what's going on. Just a little example of the things that one needs to pay attention to. And on that basis, I say, when I think back on the arbitrators in my career, whom I have admired and felt jealous of, because I don't have that fingerspitzengefühl, as the Germans say, the feeling for, that they have for how to turn each case into one where each party is feeling by little gestures, by little things that are recalled, that they are being given the full attention and equal attention to the others. To do that is magic. To do that is not a matter of applying the same rules, the same ways every time, and not to use your experience that you've had before, whatever you are doing, in every case, in a cookie cutter way. That's something which I think is a great thing to learn, and as, we move to making the case for ADR and the GCC a reality and think about the success, always consider not only the, the ecosystem, which must be ready, which must be reached out to the users in a meaningful way, but also the way individual cases are handled and not be too surprised when that means that every case doesn't seem the same. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. As you know that we say in Arabic, khitamuhu misk, that misk is the end. So thank you very much. First of all, that to know that my family name means in Swedish that more. So I'm Hamid Moore. So uh, thank you very much. I would like to thank all of you. First of all, that you are being patient to stay ahead of time. And again, I would like to thank our esteemed, you know, speakers. We are, we are really happy to have such brilliant uh, speakers and experts, uh, I think we are blessed to have just within half day uh, more than 300 years of experience um, and also to have all of these uh, well-known figures, lawyers, practitioners, in-house counsels and even officials from different governmental entities and even judges. Um, I would like to thank our 
um, our sponsors, uh, Aramco, Saudi Aramco. Thank you, Abdullah. Thank you for uh, the uh, Aramco. And also, I'd like to thank Harun. I would like to ha thank HKA for being the uh, the um, um, the Cafe Break uh, sponsor. I would like to thank our partners, the um, the international law firms uh, at Tamimi and Company, Ashurst, uh, Clifford Chance, Clyde & Co. Queen Emanuel, uh, DLA Paper, Freshfield, Herbert Smith, Notter Rose, and Square Pattern Box. Thank you very much for your partnership and your belief in the future. And I think the title that we have, we put it on purpose that we are confident that we will have much better future for ADR in the region generally. So thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to seeing all of you, if it's not earlier, next November in Dubai Arbitration Week. Uh, thank you very much. I wish you a safe and pleasant uh, trip for anyone traveling home back. And for all of you here in Dubai, thank you very much. Thank you for your patience. And again, finally, I would like to thank the dedicated team, the passionate team of SCCA. They, and some of them, honestly speaking, until early morning, they were here working to have this, uh, you know, uh, uh, great events. I would like to thank the volunteers our, I call them daughters. Uh, um, they are part of the moot from uh, UAE universities. They insisted to be part of this success. So I would like to thank them uh, for, for their commitment. So thank you for everyone, uh, cameraman, everyone here participated to this. Thank you very much for your efforts. And see you, inshallah, next year. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.